Hello friends, in this video, I'll finish the main part of the game, which is collecting the bullets. First, I'll fix the problem of a cube falling right after the hole gets close to it. Then, just like the original game, I'll show you how to add a circular progress bar and also learn how to create the cone container and a bullet loop in Blender. Let's see how we can achieve a clone of the original game. Before we fix the falling issue, let's change the scene a little bit. I'm going to give the ground more space, but don't forget to rebake the average surface. It's also a good idea to change the camera view. The next thing to consider is the color of the ground, which should be different from the other objects in the scene. This can be done by adding a texture to the ground's material. Perfect! I need to create a parent for the hole and move the joystick manager and aging component to it because I want to add a cone container and a circular progress bar to the whole game object in the future and the lead of a parent makes the work progress a little difficult. I have created a container in the shape of a cone that not only adds depth to the hole but also keeps game objects from falling off its edges. I will simply drag this cone onto the whole game object which must have a collider to keep objects on its surface. To achieve this, I will select the mesh collider. You will notice that it forms a cone shape, allowing the cube to safely rest on the edge of the hole. Also, the center of the cone is empty, enabling the cube to pass through the hole without any issues. Okay, now we need to change the scale of the cone to make it equal to the hole. By getting close to the cube, it will suddenly disappear, but it still exists on the ground, or better said, on the cone edge. You can even see its shadow. This is not an issue or a bug, just the cube not being rendered when its layer changes to the no cone. We must add the no cone layer to the opaque layer mask area for it to be displayed.
Okay, now it's time to add the circular progress bar to the hole. To do this, add a canvas and set the render mode to world space. The event camera should be the main camera of the scene and just keep the canvas component. The first image will be the white border for the previous bar. I've already created a circle in Photoshop, so the texture type must be Sprite 2D and these parameters must also be enabled because it's a PST file. After adding the image, you have to adjust its scale and the canvas must become a child of the whole game object. This is necessary because as the size of the hole grows, so must the progress bar. I noticed that the border of the progress bar appears quite thin. Perhaps we can adjust its position so that it's fully visible. There seems to be an issue with the navmesh surface. The problem is that the navmesh also bakes the cube and cone. The problem will be fixed by unchecking the unneeded layers and rebaking. Now everything works fine. Let's add a progress bar. The image type should be set to field option and the value can vary from 0 to 1 with 1 indicating that progress bar is filled.
the progress bar circle method is responsible for incrementing the progress bar by the proper amount and triggering the whole scale increase when necessary. The progress bar is divided into a certain number of segments. In this case, I want to divide it into 20, but in general, it's up to you. And each time a game object collides with the collider, one of the segments is filled. When all 20 segments are filled, the scale of the whole game object is increased and the progress bar is reset to zero. The untrigger intern method is triggered whenever an object collides with the collider associated with the script and is responsible for calling the progress bar circle method with the proper parameters. In this case, the game objects with emo tags will be detected. We need to add this new tag later and assign it to bullet game objects. Okay, the circle IMG should fill with the circle image and the whole game OBJ should fill with the whole game object. After doing this, let's add the ammo tag and assign it to the cube and start the game. In the following, I will show the cone container modeling process, which is very simple. Also, how to create a loop of bullets and use it in the game. In Blender, delete all the objects in the scene by hitting A and then the X keys. Next, press Shift plus A and select a circle from the Mesh menu, keeping the default settings. Finally, use the tab key to enter edit mode. Okay, now hit E, then S, and then dragging the mouse to extrude the circle. You can switch to the wireframe mode by using the Z key. Then pick the center circle and hit the E key to extrude it in the Z axis down and fill the bottom of the cone by hitting the F key. Save the project as a blend file and import it into Unity. I created a new scene with a bunch of bullets to test the game. As you can see, a certain number of bullets were collected and the progress bar was filled, which means the whole size will increase. To make the game more dynamic and appealing, let's use the Cinemation package to add a camera to follow the hole around the scene. Go to Package Manager and install the Cinemation package.
If you want to know how I made the bullets go in a circle, I can show you how. First, open Blender and press Shift A. Choose Nerve Circle from the Curve menu and adjust the size with the S key. Select the bullet, add an array modifier and then a curve modifier. Choose the Nerves curve you made before and increase the count to make it more bullets appear. When you are satisfied with the result, apply the modifiers. Currently the bullets are as a single object. Enter edit mode, hit the A key to select all, then hit the P key and from the dropped menu choose by loose parts. This action will separate all the bullets. The final step is to change their origin. Select all the bullets again, right click and then from the set origin menu choose origin to geometry. I hope you enjoyed this video, see you in part 3 and don't forget to like and subscribe.